Circular dichroism is dichroism involving circularly polarized light, that is, the differential absorption of left and right handed light. Left hand circular and right hand circular polarized light represent two possible spin angular momentum states for a photon, and so circular dichroism is also referred to as dichroism for spin angular momentum. This phenomenon was discovered by Jean Baptiste Biot, Augustin Fresnel, and Oima Copyright Cotton in the first half of the 19th century. It is exhibited in the absorption bands of optically active chiral molecules. CD spectroscopy has a wide range of applications in many different fields. Most notably, UVCD is used to investigate the secondary structure of proteins. UVCD is used to investigate charge transfer transitions. Near infrared CD is used to investigate geometric and electronic structure by probing metal DAR D transitions. Vibrational circular dichroism, which uses light from the infrared energy region, is used for structural studies of small organic molecules, and most recently proteins and DNA. Physical principles equals circular polarization of light equals Electromagnetic radiation consists of an electric and magnetic field that oscillate perpendicular to one another and to the propagating direction, a transverse wave. While linearly polarized light occurs when the electric field vector oscillates only in one plane, circularly polarized light occurs when the direction of the electric field vector rotates about its propagation direction while the vector retains constant magnitude. At a single point in space, the circularly polarized vector will trace out a circle over one period of the wave frequency, hence the name. The two diagrams below show the electric vectors of linearly and circularly polarized light, at one moment of time, for a range of positions. The plot of the circularly polarized electric vector forms a helix along the direction of propagation. For left circularly polarized light with propagation towards the observer, the electric vector rotates counterclockwise. For right circularly polarized light, the electric vector rotates clockwise. Equals interaction of circularly polarized light with matter equals, when circularly polarized light passes through an absorbing optically active medium, the speeds between right and left polarizations differ as well as their wavelength and the extent to which they are absorbed. Circular dichroism is the difference I I micro or per mil I micro liter I micron R. The electric field of a light beam causes a linear displacement of charge when interacting with a molecule, whereas its magnetic field causes a circulation of charge. These two motions combined cause an excitation of an electron in a helical motion, which includes translation and rotation and their associated operators. The experimentally determined relationship between the rotational strength of a sample and the I I micron is given by. The rotational strength has also been determined theoretically. We see from these two equations that in order to have non-zero, the electric and magnetic dipole moment operators must transform as the same irreducible representation. And are the only point groups where this can occur, making only chiral molecules CD active. Simply put, since circularly polarized light itself is chiral, it interacts differently with chiral molecules. That is, the two types of circularly polarized light are absorbed to different extents. In a CD experiment, equal amounts of left and right circularly polarized light of a selected wavelength are alternately radiated into a sample. One of the two polarizations is absorbed more than the other one, and this wavelength dependent difference of absorption is measured yielding the CD spectrum of the sample. Due to the interaction with the molecule, the electric field vector of the light traces out an elliptical path after passing through the sample. It is important that the chirality of the molecule can be conformational rather than structural. That is, for instance, a protein molecule with a helical secondary structure can have a CD that changes with changes in the conformation. Delta absorbans, by definition, where IA is the difference between absorbance of left circularly polarized and right circularly polarized light. IA is a function of wavelength, so for a measurement to be meaningful the wavelength at which it was performed must be known. Molar circular dichroism, it can also be expressed, by applying Beer's law, as where, 
iMicroLiter and iMicron are the molar extinction coefficients for LCP and RCP light, C is the molar concentration, L is the path length in centimeters. Then, is the molar circular dichroism. This intrinsic property is what is usually meant by the circular dichroism of the substance. Since as a function of wavelength, a molar circular dichroism value must specify the wavelength at which it is valid. Extrinsic effects on circular dichroism, in many practical applications of circular dichroism, as discussed below, the measured CD is not simply an intrinsic property of the molecule, but rather depends on the molecular conformation. In such a case the CD may also be a function of temperature, concentration, and the chemical environment, including solvents. In this case the reported CD value must also specify these other relevant factors in order to be meaningful. Molar ellipticity, although IA is usually measured, for historical reasons most measurements are reported in degrees of ellipticity. Molar ellipticity is circular dichroism corrected for concentration. Molar circular dichroism and molar ellipticity, I, are readily interconverted by the equation. This relationship is derived by defining the ellipticity of the polarization as where ER and EL are the magnitudes of the electric field vectors of the right circularly and left circularly polarized light, respectively. When ER equals EL, I zero a degree and the light is linearly polarized. When either ER or EL is equal to zero, I is 45 a degree and the light is circularly polarized. Generally, the circular dichroism effect is small, so Tani is small and can be approximated as I in radians. Since the intensity or irradiance, I, of light is proportional to the square of the electric field vector, the ellipticity becomes. Then by substituting for I using Beer's law and natural logarithm form, the ellipticity can now be written as. Since IA 250 nanometers, of proteins provides information on the tertiary structure. The signals obtained in the 250 euro 300 nanometers region are due to the absorption, dipole orientation and the nature of the surrounding environment of the phenylalanine, tyrosine, cysteine and tryptophan amino acids. Unlike in far UVCD, the near UVCD spectrum cannot be assigned to any particular 3D structure. Rather, the UVCD spectra provide structural information on the nature of the prosthetic groups in proteins, for example, the heme groups in hemoglobin and cytochrome C. Visible CD spectroscopy is a very powerful technique to study metal euro protein interactions and can resolve individual di euro d electronic transitions as separate bands. CD spectra in the visible light region are only produced when a metal ion is in a chiral environment, thus, Free metal ions in solution are not detected. This is the advantage of only observing the protein bound metal, so pH dependence and stoichiometries are readily obtained. Optical activity in transition metal ion complexes have been attributed to configurational, conformational, and the vicinal effects. Clupetin owned and vials have produced a set of empirical rules for predicting the appearance of visible CD spectra for Ku2 and Ni2 square planar complexes involving histidine and main chain coordination. CD gives less specific structural information than X ray crystallography and protein NMR spectroscopy, for example, which both give atomic resolution data. However, CD spectroscopy is a quick method that does not require large amounts of proteins or extensive data processing. Thus CD can be used to survey a large number of solvent conditions, varying temperature, pH, salinity, and the presence of various cofactors. CD spectroscopy is usually used to study proteins in solution, and thus it complements methods that study the solid state. This is also a limitation in that many proteins are embedded in membranes in their native state, and solutions containing membrane structures are often strongly scattering. CD is sometimes measured in thin films. Experimental limitations, CD has also been studied in carbohydrates, but with limited success due to the experimental difficulties associated with measurement of CD spectra in the vacuum ultraviolet region of the spectrum where the corresponding CD bands of unsubstituted carbohydrates lie. 
substituted carbohydrates with bands above the VUV region have been successfully measured. Measurement of CD is also complicated by the fact that typical aqueous buffer systems often absorb in the range where structural features exhibit differential absorption of circularly polarized light. Phosphate, sulfate, carbonate, and acetate buffers are generally incompatible with CD unless made extremely dilute for example in the 10 euro 50 mm range. The TRIS buffer system should be completely avoided when performing far UV CD. Borate and onion compounds are often used to establish the appropriate pH range for CD experiments. Some experimenters have substituted fluoride for chloride ion because fluoride absorbs less in the far UV, and some have worked in pure water. Another, almost universal, technique is to minimize solvent absorption by using shorter path length cells when working in the far UV. 0.1 mm path lengths are not uncommon in this work. In addition to measuring in aqueous systems, CD, particularly far UV CD, can be measured in organic solvents for example ethanol, methanol, trifluoroethanol. The latter has the advantage to induce structure formation of proteins, inducing beta sheets in some and alpha helices in others, which they would not show under normal aqueous conditions. Most common organic solvents such as astinitrile, THF, chloroform, Dichloromethane are however, incompatible with far uv -CD. It may be of interest to note that the protein CD spectra used in secondary structure estimation are related to the iuro to iuro orbital absorptions of the amide bonds linking the amino acids. These absorption bands lie partly in the so-called vacuum ultraviolet. The wavelength region of interest is actually inaccessible in air because of the strong absorption of light by oxygen at these wavelengths. In practice these spectra are measured not in vacuum but in an oxygen-free instrument. Once oxygen has been eliminated, perhaps the second most important technical factor in working below 200 nanometers is to design the rest of the optical system to have low losses in this region. Critical in this regard is the use of aluminized mirrors whose coatings have been optimized for low loss in this region of the spectrum. The usual light source in these instruments is a high-pressure, short-arc xenon lamp. Ordinary xenon arc lamps are unsuitable for use in the low UV. Instead, specially constructed lamps with envelopes made from high purity synthetic fused silica must be used. Light from synchrotron sources has a much higher flux at short wavelengths, and has been used to record CD down to 160 nanometers. Recently the CD spectrophotometer at the Electron Storage Ring Facility ISA at the University of Aarhus in Denmark was used to record solid-state CD spectra down to 120 nanometers. At the quantum mechanical level, the information content of circular dichroism and optical rotation are identical. See also References External links, Circular Dichroism Explained Electromagnetic waves are euro animated electromagnetic waves. The Imanum program is a teaching resource for helping students understand the nature of electromagnetic waves and their interaction with birefringent and dichroic samples, a step by step tutorial on circular dichroism.